नमस्कार एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर मनीष यादव होम्योपैथिक कंसल्टेंट वी आर गोइंग टॉक अबाउट इन फैक्ट वी गोइंग टेक आवर डिस्कशन अहेड एज वी स्टार्टेड आवर जर्नी इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग बर्नेट्स अप्रोच इन डीलिंग विद डिफिकल्ट पैथोलॉजिकल केसेस टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टेक यू डायरेक्टली टू चैप्टर नंबर 9 इन द बुक ट्यूमर्स ट्यूमर्स फ्रॉम बर्नेट जेम्स कॉम्पटन बर्नेट and in this chapter he talks about a case and then he gives a very good idea a very different sort of idea which when i read for the first time i was completely astonished means i was confused also and i had never heard something like this but yes its utility now i can vouch for it took me time for understanding the process of thinking but now i have as i have used it in my clinical practice i will be sharing few of my tips also few of my maybe understanding how i use it but before that let me take you directly to the book tumors chapter number 9 it says etiological doctrine etiological doctrine in homeopathy when we talk about chronic cases and especially when we talk about miasms and especially when we talk about miasmatic disease especially when we are dealing with such kind of cases and out of all the miasms that hanemann has narrated many more are into functioning but the basic miasm that we talk about and especially when we uh, are dealing with psychotic miasm i will tell you my experience that in my experience i used to find it a very difficult to deal with psychotic miasm means many times the disease process as you know is slow progressing it takes long time maybe sometime and i used to wonder why does it take so much long sometime in some cases especially psychotic cases that we talk about psychotic miasm is a quite rigid miasm somewhere in hanemann's literature maybe chronic disease i had read that psychosis is a disease when it erupts its process its pace is quite slow gradually it develops gradually 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 it is never going to kill it's not like syphilit syphilitic miasm which is going to kill or soric which is so active and dangerous it is going to slowly percolate the economy and slowly capture it that is why allen says in some of his phrases that you know 70 to 80% of cases or the individuals that we see here and then are psychotic we can see it around ourselves after a while we all go into a psychotic state so psychotic state in a way is a healthier state as compared to other miasm but very rigid and difficult because it slowly and slowly percolates the economy hanemann says that basically when you are dealing with these kinds of cases you should be very precautious you should not be in hurry you should not be in hurry in changing the remedy and you should not also expect that the results are going to be very fast and things are going to drastically change when i had read this thing in chronic disease i was wondering why is he telling like that and then later i realized that yes it is about the pace of the disease for example a rickshaw which has maybe maximum 60 kilometers per hour the speed and if you will run 120 kilometers an hour it is bound to damage it's bound to accident same thing is the pace of the disease when the pace of the disease is like that the way they come the way they go so on this term dealing with psychotic cases many people have different experience but let us go directly and talk about and see basically what how did actually burnet approached in his cases because when he says tumors growths definitely there are a lot of cases and a lot of lot of psychotic cases will also come in so how he was dealing it what was his thinking process how did he applied his science and what he had to say so let us go ahead and talk about it let me share you the slide and from there i'll take you step by step to this process so chapter number 9 he says etiological the the headline of that chapter is etiological doctrine of homeopathy psychosis 
and if you must have read psychosis about Hahnemann, what are forget about psychosis itself, but entire myism, the entire derivation of myism is etiologic. It is an etiological base. It was the cause, the disease, the cause from where it came. It is etiology. So etiology is very, 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 very important. And that's what Hahnemann talks about in Fifth Aphorism that, you know, to treat chronic disease, we need to understand the fundamental causes. And if you really want to understand the myism in a case, you have to really understand the etiology. So let's go ahead and understand through a case that he talks about. It is a case of warty tumor in mouth. Inside mouth, there was a warty tumor. 1886, an officer in army brought his 12 year old daughter to me on the telling me that she had something growing in her mouth. A similar growth had come a year ago when his family surgeon excised it. In six months from time of operation, it had grown again, making it difficult for the child to eat her food as it caught the tongue and teeth and then bled and then bled. This time the doctor ligated it off thoroughly, leaving a hole and informed the father that this time he hoped its root, its roots were got rid of. Now it has grown again at the side of said hole. On examining the mouth, I find in its left side, just to the left of the frenulum linguale, a warty fleshy excrescence of a shape of a coxcomb about a corner, quarter of an inch broad at its base. Nearly a quarter of an inch high. Patient has a normal teeth. Tongue is heavily coated. She is pale. And the remedy? Thuja 30 was given internally. So I am not here to analyze why Thuja was given. But yes, you can understand why Thuja was given. In and out, a psychotic case. There might be other features also, which Burnett would have taken which are not narrated here. But we can assume that it was a psychotic case. There were no other modalities. Full-blown psychosis, definitely Thuja is the remedy. Thuja followed by nitric acid is actually the recommendation by our great Hahnemann in his book, Chronic Disease. He always says that when you want to annihilate or you want to work, <clears throat> you want to uh, treat psychosis, Thuja, after it has worked, followed by nitric acid is was his prescription. But yes, what did he give? As we all know, he was a, Burnett was not a high potency prescriber generally, low potency prescriber. So Thuja 30 internally and then also he gave a mouthwash of Thuja. That was quite interesting. So internally and externally, he receives Thuja. The, the patient receives Thuja. Two drops in a dessert spoonful of water morning and night water night and morning to keep it bathing growth as long as possible then to expect. He's talking about the rinsing part. Of course, what why he gave Thuja? Full-blown case of Thuja. Okay. Now let's see what happens with the form. As this brought the growth down to a pea size, size of a pea, treatment was discontinued. How many times it happens? When patients get better, you know, maybe mildly better, they stop the treatment. But she then bit it on its successive occasion. Means, you know, children have habit of biting it. So he bit it. Whereupon it again took to growing. And in January 1887, when I saw it, it was about as big as a hornbeam. Now, what would you do? Like I was asking myself, what would I do if same thing happened? I gave Tuja. Patient got better. She went home. Not got better in the sense, not completely. They stopped the treatment. But it was better. She there was something exciting cause. She comes back. And the tumor is again there. What would I do? Probably you can type down and write down what you are thinking at this moment to give. I was thinking maybe I could have given Thuja again, maybe in higher potency or 
you know, LM you could have started. He gives Sabina 30. Now, this is quite interesting. I was wondering, why Sabina 30? Why Sabina 30? Let's go ahead and see what happens the next. Follow. <clears throat> Sorry. Patient took a healthy look, but a small piece of growth still persisted. Means after Sabina 30, patient was much better. Amazing, right? But yes, small piece piece of growth was still there. And then what he gives? He gives cupressius lawsonia. Again, he changes the remedy. Cupressius lawsonia, no, lawsonia no, is a rare remedy, not used by many of them. Boric writes down, it's, it, literature writes it, acts like tuja. It is not a well-proved remedy. Whatever little literature we have, it is said it acts like Thuja. It was proved by Burnett himself. While proving it, Burnett, terrible pain in stomach, so he discontinued the proving. So when he was proving this remedy, there was a terrible pain in stomach that he got and he had to discontinue. So one of the keynote symptoms is pain in the stomach, if you can get. So psychosis with severe pain in stomach Cupressus could be a very good suggestion. What happens? Recovery. March 1887, I did not see her again, but I met her father in October on another matter. When I inquired about the case, he replied, oh, she is quite well. The lump has been gone a long time, but the hole is still there. Now the question here is, of course, patient got better, things were great, but the question which I started thinking was, when did you not, why did he, he means, you means, Bernard, why did you not stick to Thuja rather than follow it up by Sabaina and then Cupressus? Why do you change the remedies? Why do you change the remedies? The common factor, though I could find out, is that all the three remedies are psychotic remedies. All are anti-miasmatic remedies. So, and he was actually giving an anti-miasmatic remedy Tuja, Sabina, Cupressus, psychotic remedies. Why? And here is the answer. I will read it slowly. Let it sink in your mind. When I had read it first time, it took me time for it to sink. But yes, slowly and steadily, I realized what a master stroke. What a master stroke this Burnett has. He says, because I found from practical experience that ringing the changes on like acting remedies conduces more quickly. What he says, ringing the changes, like acting remedies conduces more quickly to cure than going on the same. So same remedy, if you, if you slightly change it, slightly changes, it's like ringing the pattern, the tuning that is happening. If you change it slightly, the cure rate is even faster. How do we understand this? Of course, Burnett is not there to explain. But I can tell you from my, my experience. I have used this in some of my cases. Now, retrospectively, when I think about Sabina and Thuja, let's talk about Sabina and Thuja, basically. This patient of us was a female. Sabina and Thuja are a very similar remedy. If you read, there are a lot of commonalities in terms of psychotic origin, uh, dreams of falling, you find Sabina and Thuja, both are very prominent. And many literatures, many places, uh, when you read Sabina, it is said to be psychotic or engine, like Thuja, acts like Thuja, and very similar to Thuja, basically. The only thing is Sabina is a female remedy. Of course, I know that in homeopathy there are no female remedy or male remedy, but yes, there are some affinities towards it. Sabina is predominantly a female remedy. Till date, I have not seen Sabina prescription in men. Okay. The entire matramedic of Sabina talks about female. And when you read the menses part, the clots and, you know, partly clotted, partly liquid, 
so psychotic origin and having problem with menses listen to this carefully i have used this a lot psychotic a lady is psychosis you know full blown psychosis is there you are giving your remedies partially it is acting you feel you are stuck maybe you have also tried tuja but you are confirmed that yes it is psychotic remedy it's female and then you ask about the menses menses are there are a lot of clots coming on pains are also there liquid is also there you know character is changing instead of tuja you should give sapaina so the base of psychosis with menstrual irregularities and he of course dreams of falling if you get instead of tuja maybe after tuja sabaina and after sabaina maybe cupressius so changing the remedy so one one frame okay we are treating psychosis so one we give first time we give tuja then slightly different we give sabaina slightly different we give cupressius it works beautifully in some of the cases i have used sabaina on this terms i have used in this fashion like tuja then sabaina in females i'm talking about especially also one more remedy i use it many a times is medorina if you go and read medorina from alan's keno second or third paragraph he talks about overitis salpingitis all the itis of pelvic region entire pid you can see there in alan's keno thyroid score so especially when there is you know pelvic region is affected too much psychotic base is there so maybe instead of tuja i will give medorinum or if i would have given tuja next prescription in, instead of instead of increasing remedy i might change it to medo and maybe sabaina as the patient goes quickly so friend this is one ideology this is one thinking process bernard has put forth yes there could be a uh, lot of contradictions to attach to it there could be a lot of arguments attached to it that's all okay i'm just here to share you what bernard used to do how he used to think my entire purpose of making all these videos is to make bernard's understanding simpler of course he was a great master great cases and uh, i'll be coming back with such cases more and more but learning from these videos would be really fruitful especially when you start applying it in your practice and you own self become an experimenter you experiment in your practice and see what happens if you was right accept it if you was wrong do not accept it. so i'm done with this topic i'll come up come back with a few more videos and talk about different different cases it's going to be a very exciting journey i'm really enjoying it thoroughly and we'll talk about many cases of burnet and learn the hidden secrets hidden secrets so that we can use it in our practice and help so many so many suffering individuals thank you very much namaste